Yep. Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Laurent Weber. I'm also known as Kabe. And um, I want to introduce you to the work I did during the last uh, six months. But first I have to do some hardware stuff. Okay, so I had no power supply. Okay, um, here's the layout of this talk. Um, first of all, I will start with a brief introduction about myself, who I am. Uh, then I will go over to the motivation of this uh, talk and this work, why I did it and uh, why I think it's important. Um, then I will introduce you to some background knowledge about uh, GSM networks and SCAPI since I think that not everybody might be aware of um, the background you need to understand this talk. This uh, will be very short and, and easy to understand. Uh, the fourth part will be about um, the philosophy of the code I wrote and um, when you are using some hardware to play with GSM you have to, to send a message in a different way than if you would uh, use it um, to, to send for a normal network. So I also had to um, change different things in Scapy to be able to use uh, hardware which I will also present later on. Um, the last part will be the most interesting part, I think, and it's also the longest part. Um, I will present uh, my test setup, and I will then also show you some demonstration, which hopefully will work, but I made the experience that it's always working in the hotel room, but not in the conference room. Uh, yeah, so maybe today we have more luck. Um, then we'll start with some very basic things like uh, how to perform a call using um, the tool I wrote or the add-on I wrote on top of the tool. Um, and since this is not really security related and I'm more into, into security, I'll also present some um, attacks. First of all, I will start with some well-known and uh, well-understood um, attacks that you can find in the liter literature. Um, yeah, I will, there I will simply recreate them and show you that uh, using my tool it's really easy to to get them uh, set up and and that yeah that helps researchers to focus on attacks and not on how to realize them later on. And uh, in order to yeah, underline the importance of the tool, I also uh, will present some novel attacks that have never been done on the GSM network. Um, and uh, yeah, my tool makes it really easily possible to um, to create a package for these for those attacks, and uh, and we'll also see this. Um, but I have to say, this is um, still work in progress, and it's very phone dependent. So uh, yeah, will, I will explain that later on. Um, the last part will be about the source code, and I'm not going to say anything about it now. So you will stay till the end, I hope. Um, yeah, I think it's worth it. So uh, about the order, yes, um, I'm doing security now for leisure, I don't know, for very long, so I would um, call myself an IT security enthusiast. Um, I just uh, finished my master in um, IT security at the Ruhr Universität in Bochum. Uh, since I'm from Luxembourg, I also did some things that were related to um, security in Luxembourg. For example, I was co-founder of the Chaos Computer Club in Luxembourg. And uh, else for, the, for my free time, I'm a CTF player in the legendary Fluxfingers CTF team, which some of you might know. Yes, the motivation of this talk. Um, yeah, until now, it was really hard for independent security researchers to um, dig into the um, security of uh, GSM networks, even if it's very a um, very old um, technology. Um, the prices were for too high for independent people to, um, to look at this. And uh, this has uh, changed now some time ago because um, due to tools like uh, the USRP, for example, I will present later on, uh, it's now really possible for everybody to play with this um, uh, network and uh, everything that's related to it. I mean, some USRP costs around uh, 2,000 euro and then you have a very good one and you can basically do everything you want. 
And it's not the only um, hardware device that allow you to do stuff like this. I mean, there are plenty other, always more to come. I mean, you have nano BTS and femto cells and so on. Um, yes, uh, as I said, some time ago, there's a um, turnover started and the infrastructure become affordable. And um, due to a very large open source community, there are also open source tools available to operate these infrastructures and through this um, allow people like me to, um, to do some things that are related to the security of uh, TSM. Mm -hmm. well, another, um, another factor for the motivation of this work was that um, there's simply no other similar tool available and uh, um, before I started to do it, uh, I was talking to some persons that are working uh, in the GSM area and they were all complaining that there's nothing publicly available that does exactly what uh, this tool does. And uh, that's why I decided um, to have a look at it. Before, I've never done anything with GSM, so you see in six months you can, you can dig into it and have some fun. Yeah, uh, now we come to the background uh, of uh, the stuff you have to know and to understand. Um, it's a very coarse overview now of uh, GSM network. Um, on the left side, the blue boxes are um, the mobile uh, stations. So this is basically uh, your mobile phone or everything that is um, capable of speaking your GSM protocol. Those devices are um, linked to a base transceiver station uh, over the air interface. Um, and uh, behind this, again, it's connected, uh, the, the base transceiver station is connected over an ABIS interface uh, to a base station controller. And uh, finally, an A interface is connecting uh, that part to a mobile switching center or visitor or le uh, location register. Of course, as I, as I said, it's not a complete overview. It's only to present, uh, to present it in a little piece to people that never have seen anything about GSM. But uh, all this is uh, way too much already for this talk. All you have to know is this part of the diagram. Um, so you have to know what the mobile stations are. Or in, in our case, it will be this phone here and the one here. Uh, and the base transceiver station will be um, played by my uh, weather P. Um, in reality, that would be uh, the antenna of an operator. The stuff with the ABIS interface you can already forget. Um, that's not interesting for what I'm going to present. Now, SCAPI, SCAPI, well, um, I think most of you know it because it's um, very, know, very good known in the IT security um, circles and it's a powerful interactive um, program that allows you to create a package and to manipulate them on a field basis. Uh, it has been created by Philippe Biondi, I mean, uh, I think it's uh, even seven years ago or something like this. Um, it allows you to create um, very, very, uh, very good package, um, correct package in a very fast way that's related to the um, to the philosophy of the, um, of SCAPI, which um, I also took for my add-on, and I will um, dig into it uh, later on. Uh, it's easy to add new protocols, which makes it possible for um, for people like me to add a protocol that has never been implemented. And through this, there are also a lot of protocols that are supported now. Um, my protocol, yeah, the layer three of GSM, I specif um, the specification are 700 pages of it, and it took me 13,000 lines of code. So um, it was a lot of work, but the complex city, uh, complexity of the code was uh, really not that high. And uh, this allows them to debug, uh, even if you don't understand the protocol, you might find errors because it's always the same. So um, a community might help to, um, to um, get rid of the bugs that, are, that maybe are still in my protocol, in my add-on. I hope, of course, that it's bug-free, but 
Yeah, you know how that is. Um, yeah, Scapy takes um, part of the um, Python interpreter. This allows you to use every structure you know um, from programming, like loops and like uh, conditions. That makes it really easy to write um, scripts to react to some incoming packets and um, do some clever fuzzing or whatever you want to do. Um, you can yeah you can write scripts. You can also if if you only want to want to test something, you can also specify it only in the command line and so on. It's yeah I really like that tool. I, I use it often in CTFs, but uh, I think in, in in real life it's very useful. Yes, the code now, um, as I said, I will uh, introduce you to the philosophy of um, my, my philosophy of the talk I did and the philosophy of uh, Philippe Biondi in his, um, in his um, tool. Well, one of the most important ideas of the tool is that you are able to create a packet, valid packets uh, where the default values match um, and are correct in a very fast way. In order to get this, I um, decided to um, drop everything that was optional. In GSM, you have to know that um, there are a lot of packages that are optional, like you have optional information elements and you have optional fields. Uh, so the basic package you create uh, when you use my tool, it's the smallest possible um, packet uh, where all the optional stuff is um, cut out and uh, this allows to be very fast. Uh, this is not a limitation because it's still possible to create every possible messages. Um, you can simply add um, the name of your information element underscore presence uh, set to one in your um, uh, function as a, as a function parameter, and if you want to have that um, that information element. Yeah, now I, I already talked a lot about a tool and I never said what it's actually able to do. Uh, since I inc um, implemented the whole protocol, you are able to create layer three messages on a command line. And these messages can be sent um, from a base transceiver station to a mobile station. This is uh, what I will do here um, when I'm go going to do some demonstration. I'll only send packets from, the, from my USAP to the phones. Um, but uh, you could also send messages from uh, your mobile phone to some BTS and do some fuzzing on, your, on an operator's network. But um, I'm not going to do this. Uh, this is related to two points. The first one would be, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to crash uh, by mistake uh, the network operator's uh, infrastructure here. And um, for the moment, there's no public um, possibility, um, open source possibility or, yeah, to do this. Uh, but it could be re easily reached. You could, uh, for example, use uh, Osmocom BB, which is an open source um, GSM stack, and uh, change it in a way that you could uh, send your prepared messages to some operator. This network, but uh, as I said, I didn't have the time to do it, to implement this. Um, it should be really easy to do. I mean, if you're fit in C, it should take uh, one hour. Yes, the scope of this code uh, which I implemented so far, it's um, the specification 0408, uh, which is basically is a um, whole layer tree um, of uh, GSM, but without um, the services that are um, on top of it, like uh, you are not able, for example, to um, send SMS for the moment. Uh, I started to implement this because I thought it would be some really nice feature to have because SMS could be automated in a good way. Um, and um, yeah, I started to implement it, but I stopped at the, um, to focus more on the GSM part. Uh, the limitations, well, um, I have to admit there's one limitation, basically one limitation, and that's um, that you are unable to dissect incoming packets for the moment. Uh, this means uh, packets that um, answers you get, uh, you cannot um, dissect them using uh, SCAPI for the moment. Um, I didn't need it when I was doing my research. I um, simply piped the results to, uh, over GSM tab to Wireshark, and there you have an... Uh, the sector for the layer three, so this was uh, good enough for me. Um, during the um, coding, and I had some beta testers, um, and uh, I think they started to implement that 
part. Uh, no, I, I know they started to implement it, but uh, I'm not sure they will release it even if they said so. But uh, it would be cool if they would also release a dissector so we could merge it and have the perfect tool. Yeah. So um, now I come to the part where we want to send a message over over the hardware, over, over our choice. Um, therefore, we need a method to send raw bytes to um, some hardware tool. Um, usually, when you use Scape, you simply send it over the Ethernet and uh, everything is done. Uh, you don't have to bother a lot. Well, for this case, now um, I had to change something. First of all, um, I had to find out how all this stuff works. Uh, I was new to this uh, weather pay stuff, and I found out it's an easy. The easiest way would be to use some uh, open BTS function that opens you an UDP socket, and then you can simply push the, your raw packet uh, onto that socket. Well, it's quite easy to implement. Um, my beta tester, he was using some nano BTS uh, with some, uh, so he was uh, using um, OpenBSC and uh, did some hacks to be able to also uh, inject packets and he, wa he wanted a TCP socket, so I did this in the same time and um, the, later, uh, the latest, latest part um, I implemented was the Unix domain socket since I thought, so it's, um, it's ready if somebody has the idea to implement uh, the feature I was discussing just a minute ago um, for Osmocom VB, so because they do everything with uh, Unix domain sockets so far. Um, yeah, all these three types of sockets should allow, um, should allow the most um, flexibility and users should be um, able to share the code without having to do uh, much uh, patching to make it work on different Hardware, so I, I think uh, this is the best way to to have uh, a wider reach. So the last part now, uh, the boring stuff is over, and uh, we come to some some more interesting part. Um, first of all, um, how did I test uh, test all this, and how was my test setup? Uh, I had a Faraday cage. In this, uh, I was running my uh, PC with my Scapey GSM um, add-on, which is connected over USB to uh, uh, the USB-P1. And this, again, is then connected over the UM interface to my uh, mobile phones. Um, we are the details of my USB-P1 I have here. Um, I'm only having one daughter board. I, I have an RFX 900. Um, it's enough for testing, but if you want to uh, run a full network, you should of course um, have more, you should uh, have two daughter boards. Um, very important uh, is the clock you uh, have in your, <coughs> sorry, you have in your um, user P. I, I was using a clock tamer. Uh, the clock cost um, 400 euros, I think. Uh, but it's worth all the money. Uh, before I had another and uh, I had only trouble with it. Uh, if you have a bad clock or too much clock drift, um, the phones are not able to register to your base station and then you cannot, you, uh, you can not even start uh, to send packages around. So it's very, very important. Uh, to send the message from the USRP to the mobile station, I was uh, using uh, some feature of OpenBTS, which is called a test call. Um, the test call function is uh, very handy. Um, it's, it sets up a um, channel to one mobile phone, and uh, it, so it deals already with uh, mobility management and uh, radio um, link stuff. So you only have to concentrate on the part with the uh, call control, which also I did in the next uh, part in the next slide. I will show you. Um, but that's, that does not mean that my tool would not allow you to uh, do all the stuff. Since I implemented the whole um, protocol, you are able to um, create uh, every possible message of uh, layer three. So you could uh, also um, set up the whole uh, radio link stuff by, by hand if, if you like. So, But it's not really fun. Yeah, um, as I said at the beginning, I had a lot of trouble with my um, clock, so uh, I had to find some other ways to um, 
to validate the implementation. Therefore, I searched uh, the internet and I found some Wireshark capture, which uh, at the beginning, then I simply recreated them. And uh, if I had this, at the end, I had the same uh, hex dump, I was happy because I just created a GSM packet, even without sending it. Uh, well, this is the most complex uh, package I found during all my work uh, with this tool and uh, this infrastructure. Uh, it's a measurement report message. Uh, basically, you see uh, people that know um, Scapy uh, should recognize it. The first thing is uh, you create a package and you name it A, and then you set the different uh, fields with their value. Well, in this case, it's uh, uh, it's very very verbose, but uh, uh, as I said, it's the complexest package I've found during all my work. Mostly, if you only deal with um, call control messages, it's like uh, two bytes or something like that. It's very short messages. Um, yeah. Um, so I compared the hex dump of so, um, this package with the one of the Wireshark and. Uh, it was the same, so I was happy. Uh, there was no big implementation error. Uh, I recreated, uh, I don't know, 100 packages or something like this by hand just to validate. Uh, yeah, because I could not validate them with real phones, I did it by hand. Uh, and I will give you a link where you can you can have a look at it if you're interested in later on. But uh, all this stuff is pretty boring, so I decided uh, once I had a clock, now we do something which is cooler. Uh, let's perform a call. Uh, here again, you have to know there are two different um, types of uh, calls. The one is initiated by the mobile station, the other one is initiated by the base transceiver station, so by the network. Uh, as I already said, um, I'm not going to do some calls from the phone to the network, but only the other way around. Um, even if, again, that's not a limitation, the messages are implemented. Uh, if you have the infrastructure, feel free to test them. So, yeah, we are basically now focusing on the second uh, message part of protocol run. Uh, yes, now the detail of the protocol run um, you are sending messages back and forth, and uh, you start with some uh, radio link, and uh, the green messages are radio link messages, and then the, the red one um, <coughs> a message that's related to uh, uh, mobility management, and the blue one are the call control messages. So um, in this case, I, I will only do the call control messages because, as I said, the test call function is already taking care of the rest. So um, if now you want to perform a call and you have set up your phone call with a test call function, you only need to send a setup message and then a connect acknowledge message to finish the protocol run in a nice way. So uh, Scapy would uh, realize this uh, with this way. Um, send UM is a, is a method I added to send uh, yeah, the, the raw packages over the UDP sockets, which I presented uh, some slides ago. Uh, and you don't even have to set any field because the default uh, values are matching perfectly and uh, you don't have to care to take care of anything. The test call function, when you set it up, you have to, to give an IMSI so, um, it, so the, um, the hardware knows to which phone it's um, talking so you don't, in the control, in the call control, you don't have to specify any more than this stuff. Yes, and now I'll try to demonstrate that. As I already said, uh, it's not always easy. Okay, now uh, left side uh, you have um, Scapy, GSM, um, well that's um, my add-on. On the um, right side, top corner, um, some log files and uh, the prompt for um, OpenBTS is, uh, is now coming.
Okay. Um, now I'm I'll search for the station on my phone and hopefully I'll find it. Um, So in the meantime, I'll create a packet here. Um, as I said, to have some correct um, protocol one, I need two packages. The first one was in uh, setup mobile um, originated message. Now, if uh, you want to see uh, what the content of that package, uh, it's, um, it's it's two or well, basically three information elements. The first first one is the TA TI, and then you have a TD, and then uh, the message type. So it's a very short uh, package. It has only two bytes. Um, yeah, still starting. And uh, the other package was a connect acknowledge packet. Again, uh, not a, a very big packet. Okay, now it found the network, so I'm connecting to the network. Okay, okay, great, I'm connected to the network now. Um, let's try to um, uh, to set up the test call function. Um, which are hopefully working. Yes, it's working. So now I'm going to send uh, uh, the first packet. And now my phone is ringing as you hear. Now to um, terminate the, the um, correct uh, run, I'm sending the second packet. Now it's normal that it's still um, running, uh, for, um, ringing. Um, and if I send this, it's killing the connection. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's uh, impressive what you can do with four bytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's the first time this demo really works, so <laughs> can be happy. <laughs> well, it's the first time it works in a demonstration because I did uh, way complex things at home, but uh, yeah. Okay, so now let's focus on some different stuff. Um, classical attacks, as I already explained at the beginning, classical attacks um, are attacks that are well known and understood and you can find them in literature. Um, the first one I'm going to, exp to present here, um, it's an IMSI detach indication uh, message that you send. Um, this time you are sending it from the mobile station to the base transceiver station, so I'm only um, presenting this in theory, since I'm not sending messages to a network, uh, but just to show you um, how easily this attack now can be realized. Um, the specification of this um, packet, or this message, um, yeah, it's, uh, represented in this table now here. Uh, you see all the information elements uh, are mandatory. Um, the lengths are all fixed except for the m uh, mobile identity where you have an, a size of from depending on also from two to nine bytes. Uh, yes, um, a graphical representation of this package is looks um, good looks like this. This is now my representation. Um, as you see, the different uh, values are set by default, so you don't have to care, take care of it. If you create now an IMSI uh, detach indication message, the, the blue part, the gray part, the red part, and the yellow part are already set. That are default values that are um, specified uh, in the specification. So um, you do not have to take care of this. now. 
Of course, if you want to do some fuzzing or uh, send some broken package, you can, of course, using Scapy, you can change the fields. But uh, as the philosophy of the of the tool is to um, is to have the smallest valid packet, um, I set the default value in the correct way, so you do not have to take care of it. The only thing you have to take care of is the mobile identity. Um, you have to set these uh, nine, nine bytes, uh, two to nine bytes in the correct way. Um, well, the first one is the length. The first byte is uh, computed uh, by, the, by the tool. Um, so this would now, if you set uh, the full packet, uh, it would look like something like this. You create the, um, the package and set, then you set the values um, and have <clears throat> and have uh, yeah, the whole package as a hex dump at the end, um, and you can send it. Uh, the result of such an attack would be that the user would not be able anymore to receive any SMS or call. Um, active calls would uh, get killed, and uh, for the user, everything looks normal. He still sees on his phone that he's connected uh, to the network, and he has no indication that uh, stuff that's not working anymore. Um, well, this is uh, what the literature says. Uh, I to talked to some persons who said it depends on the phone, on the operator. Uh, sometimes you don't see that you are connected anymore and stuff like this. Uh, now, imagine using Scapy, you could send that every second, so you could uh, disconnect uh, whole buildings if you w would like to. Um, so. Uh, it's really easy to do stuff like this now. If it's good, it's another question, but uh, we are the good ones, no? So don't do that. <laughs> yes, and now a uh, second attack. Well, it's, uh, I, I call it attack. Uh, well, it's uh, something I found in the specifications. Uh, it's simply an authentication reject uh, message. Um, when you send this one, uh, the, the user get dis gets disconnected from the network. He uh, has an inscription on his um, display that says uh, SIM card registration failed and he's unable to connect to this or to any other um, GSM network until uh, he's uh, restarting his mobile phone. Uh, this also could be um, very annoying. Um, uh, if, if you pretend to be a real operator and then people log into your cell and then you s start to do stuff like this, so it could be really annoying. Um, yeah, I will try to demonstrate this one as well. But first of all, I will show you um, the details here of the po package I uh, created uh, before. Um, because this packet has uh, it's it has a different li uh, it has uh, it's the longest package we have seen so far. Uh, you could set uh, all these bytes with a diagnostic uh, foo. Um, so even if the default package is very very short, uh, you could have a packet that has um, some some bytes which related to the information element cause. Yeah. Just to show you that not every package is uh, only two bytes long. Okay, let's uh, try to get uh, a demonstration running again. It's not always easy, as you might know. <laughs> um, therefore, I have to reconnect to my uh, uh, first search again for the um, for the base station and then connect to it again and then um, we start the loop and so on. So uh, during the last past uh, six months, waiting was one of my uh, favorite uh, oper uh, operations I did. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe one should uh, invest some time to um, to fix uh, or to patch the test call function of the open BTS to make it a little bit clever or more clever. Um, so this is the package I want to say uh, send. It's again only very, very short packet. Um, I'm trying now to make it work, usually. 
It fails here, man. I do it two times, one after the other. No. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, basically it's the same, except you send another packet. <laughs> but uh, I, I will try later on, but uh, no, I don't think it will work again. As I said, it's it's very strange sometimes. And uh, so now, uh, last part of this talk: um, the um, novel attacks. Uh, novel attacks are attacks that have never been done on the TSM network. Um, the attacks are not really new, but has never been done on the TSM network. Um, I, I decided to um, do some research on the state machines. Um, there, <clears throat> I focused on the on the state machines of the mobile subscriber on the mobile station side. Of course, again, that's not a limitation. You could also start uh, to play around with the uh, uh, state machine of your, so your operator or of an, yeah, or, or of open B BTS and stuff like this. Um, but I only did the mobile subscriber side, and it's you have so many. Possibilities that uh, alone, if you want to do this side in a clever way and a good way, it will take you, yeah, I think years. Um, the idea, the idea behind uh, this novel attack is to, to test the correct behavior of the implementation uh, by sending correct messages, but uh, in a wrong order. So um, this would be really easy to do with uh, Scapy since you could do some programming uh, and uh, the default package you are using are already valid packages. So you could start, uh, for example, by sending um, the basic package with uh, the smallest package and then try to add um, more information elements and, and change the order of the package. So it will, as I said, there are so, ma so many possibilities uh, it would if you are not reverse engineering the <clears throat> the basement stack on the other side at the same time, uh, some black box testing will take you very, very, very long. Yes, and now uh, for the person that have never seen a uh, state machine, I think most of you, of you here should know what it is. Uh, I did some illustration here. Um, that's a subgraph of the mobile um, station state machine. Uh, you have uh, the states and then one action and then you get to the next state and so on. And now uh, the idea would be, for example, to um, if you are in state one, you are, you send an event, uh, and and through that event uh, you try to reach a state that is not the next state, but uh, one that comes at the end or something like this. Um, yes, as I said, this is work in progress um, given the complexity and uh, and yeah, you should uh, try it on different phones and so on. Um, uh, it's a lot of work. So um, I will present now the tech with some call clearing uh, example. Uh, call clearing is when you have done your, your you have finished um, your call, you disconnect and you release uh, the link and the channel and so on. Um, this is the protocol run how it uh, is um, defined in the specifications. And um, the idea is now, um, one idea I had, and I think that's why I picked this example because I tried a lot. Um, I think it's easy to understand uh, what, what you could reach here. Um, if you now manage to somehow reach a state where instead of um, releasing the, the channel, you manage to, um, to make the user only think that you hang up, but in reality you are still Somewhere, somewhere you you recreated a link and you are eavesdropping or something like this on the conversation. Um, that was the idea I had um, to illustrate this stuff. Uh, for example, you are calling a um, director of some bank and you are talking to him and after you are hanging up, but in reality you are still listening what's happening on the other side. So you could uh, gather some information on... Uh, I don't know, some confidential information without the other knowing. That was one of the idea um, I, I tried to, uh, to, to reach. 
Uh, now this is only two test cases I did. Uh, it was like, uh, first of all, you set up a phone call, but instead of um, finishing the, the call like it's uh, specified here with a channel release, uh, you, are send, you are sending and set up mobile originated. That was the package we used to set up the phone call, for example. So um, maybe depending on how the implementation is, uh, it, this could lead to the fact that the phone would set up again uh, the phone call or something like this. Well, at least that was my idea. And uh, the second test was basically the same thing I did, but uh, instead of uh, sending and set up mobile originated, you are sending some connect acknowledge or something like that. So you hope that the, that the phone uh, will, will reconnect uh, you or recreate a link to the phone. But uh, yeah, this two example didn't work, at least not on my phones. Um, well, I only had my two Nokia phones, uh, which is not very, very uh, clever for testing since, uh, yeah, um, I guess the state machine is uh, most part will be still the same, even if the phone have uh, five years of age difference. But I found other things that look uh, very promising, and I'm still looking into it. Uh, but um, it's it's like always, if you have only these phones here, you cannot do much with it. You should have uh, some developer phones, or you should uh, somehow have the baseband stack to reverse engineer. And, and then you would, um, I'm sure, you would find uh, things uh, yeah, in a really easy way, because I'm pretty sure there's plenty of stuff to find. Yeah, um, so that was basically everything I had uh, to present um, here. I'll only, some words for the source code. Um, yeah, I was de developing this stuff on my own um, repository and, and uh, yeah, I would have preferred it to be in the real scapey. Um, uh, distribution and so that everybody has it and maybe um, this would lead some people to look at GSM uh, even if it wasn't the plan uh, from the beginning and so I decided to follow uh, Linus Torvald's idea to put it uh, somewhere uh, where everybody can fetch it and then have a copy of it and a mirror of it. Uh, in this case uh, I talked to Philippe Biondi and he merged my uh, my code into um, Scapey. You, know, you can find uh, my code uh, in the contrib folder, uh, and uh, yeah, feel free to play with it. Um, as I said during the talk, I, um, at the beginning where I didn't have the clock, I, um, I created a lot of packets by hand, and, and uh, if you want to look at this packet for, uh, to get started, if you have never used uh, Scapy, or if you want uh, to, to see a little bit how, how it's working with Scapy GSM, um, the first link is uh, an example. Um, there you find all these examples I did. And um, the second link is uh, my thesis. Um, I wrote a master thesis on the subject and uh, um, it's the first time I release it, so uh, yeah. you are the lucky ones <laughs> or, or, or unlucky, depends. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, feel free to send me bugs, feed uh, reports, uh, nay, uh, bugs, uh, feedback and questions and uh, bug reports, so this way. Uh, to my email address or follow me on uh, Twitter if you will, uh, if you want, it's uh, fine with me. Yeah, I want to thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, are there any questions?